Hello and welcome to this presentation on our paper, a Strategic Routing Framework and Algorithms for Computing Alternative Paths. My name is Max and I'm going pre uh, to present this joint work between TomTom Tom and the Chair of Algor for Algorithm Engineering at the Hessel Platner Institute. We wanted to deal with the topic of uh, strategic routing because over the last few years street congestion, traffic jams and uh, pollution have become increasingly large issues and we see costs of about 3 billion euros uh, due to street congestion in German cities alone. And we want to offer two main contributions in our paper. So first of all, we provide a strategic routing framework in which we describe how to derive algorithmic problems from problem statements. And secondly, we introduce one of these problems in detail, which we call the single alternative path problem. But first of all, we want to make clear what strategic routing really is, as there hasn't been any unique understanding in literature yet. Uh, we speak of strategic routing uh, when two conditions are met. So first of all, we need to calculate one or more route that are proposed to more than one agent. And f uh, secondly, this set of proposed routes should be shared, uh, scored by shared scoring rather than scoring each agent individually. This is, for example, uh, applied in practice in the Socrates 2.0 project of the European Union, where Experts in the city of Amsterdam predefine alternative routes and triggers for them, which uh, requires uh, extensive work and monitoring, and we think algorithms can help in automating this process. Uh, due to time constraints, I'm going to introduce the framework by formalizing the SAP problem. For more details about the framework, please refer to our paper. The problem we consider in our paper is the SAP problem, and in this problem, uh, we have an input graph in the uh, original root Q that is already calculated, so depicted here in blue. And we also have a number of cars or drivers or agents, D per unit of time, uh, that should be routed. And for this graph, we are also given edge latency functions, uh, which is a function for each edge that describes the time a single car needs to traverse the edge depending on the load. So how many cars are already on the edge. An algorithm solving the SAP problem should output an alternative route P, which can be either disjoint, like here, to the original route, and also overlap with the original route depicted here in red. This alternative route P can be put into a psychological model, and this psychological model describes, like a black box approach, how many uh, drivers are going to switch from the original route to the alternative route. And this will be given by the value xp, and implicitly, as we know, there are d drivers in total, d minus xp drivers will be using uh, or staying on the original route. This can be done uh, via different approaches, and I'm going to talk about one example at the end of this talk. Um, for now, we just assume the psychological model is a black box that tells us how many people are going to use an alternative route um, when we introduce one of these uh, routes to the system. And um, the overall score we want to optimize in our problem is the so-called overall travel time. This travel time, or cost CP, depends on the alternative route and uh, implicitly also depends on how many people are going to use the alternative route and then describes the total latency of the entire system for pr uh, traversing the two uh, routes. So we have the non-shared segments of the alternative depicted here in orange where we know XP drivers are driving through. So we have this term for this segment. Then we know on the original route there are D minus XP people driving, so we have this part here uh, and represented by this term. And on the overlapping parts, there just always are RD drivers, which is uh, given here on the intersection of P and Q, uh, Q uh, in the term. And so we already see a cyclic uh, kind of cyclic dependency here. While calculating the alternative route, we already have to keep in mind that it should be optimal with respect to this cost function, uh, but we can only find out how many people are going to use the alternative to score it uh, after we have calculated it uh, to put it into the psychological model. There's also another issue. Consider two alternatives like here, P1 and P2, uh, with these cost functions. You can see that no matter the traffic, uh, uh, traversing P2 is always uh, more co uh, cost-intensive. So one might think um, 
that it would be uh, cheaper to uh, always choose P1. But uh, depending on the overlap in producing the original root Q, um, P1 shares a lot more edges. So uh, if P1 shares many edges with Q, there's only little potential for P1 to distribute the traffic between P1 and P2, uh, b between P1 and Q. Because P2 is a lot more disjoint to Q, maybe it's better to uh, propose P2 because then the drivers can split up. So this is kind of counterintuitive, but we shouldn't uh, throw away P2 even though the function seems to be uh, always more expensive. We resolve that property by uh, taking the uh, intersection or the non-intersectional parts of the two routes into account. So again, we have this situation here. You can see that P1 splits up Q in this part, where there are no shared segments between Q and P1, and we have this part, where they overlap. And on the overlapping parts, there just always are D drivers. So uh, the traffic only on Q without P1 is reduced when we introduce the alternative P1 into the system. And of course, same goes for the other alternative P2. So we ha actually have to take a look at the cost functions, like here, of the non-shared segments, Q without P1 and Q without P2. In this case, these are linear functions, and we can see, assuming when we introduce uh, both alternatives to the system, that uh, when the same amount of drivers X switch from the original to the alternative, that we get a larger cost reduction uh, for P1. And as we, uh, as we see here, we actually want to maximize this cost reduction, which is, as we can al also see here, just the derivative of this function. And by maximizing uh, the derivative of this function, we could equally also minimize the derivative of this intersectional part, which is why we can make the following definition. Uh, if we have two alternative paths, P1 and P2 given, we say P1 dominates P2, denoted like here, if we have dominance on the cost functional level, like here, and also dominance uh, on the derivatives of the intersection. And as we can see uh, intuitively here, we also get the following lemma if we have two paths where one path dominates another path, for all x, cp1 of x is less or equal than cp2 of x. So uh, this is the intuition why we want the derivative of the intersection here in our definition of dominance so we can derive this lemma for example and uh, not like uh, the, the cost function itself so um, there's just last one issue we need to resolve now and this is that maybe for P p2 we have a different xp2 than for uh, this path so maybe the psychological model that we have ignored until now uh, assigns a different amount of drivers to p2 than to p1 and we resolved that issue by defining a property of psychological models that we call Pareto conformity. And we say a psychological model is Pareto conform if dominance implies lower overall costs. Now our uh, SAP problem just reduces to finding all non-dominated paths and then we can just brute force this set of uh, non-dominated paths and choose the cheapest path. Um, we can do this because we know for paths that are dominated, there's another path dominating it, which has lower costs. The question now is, how do we do this? How do we find all non-dominated paths? We do this via a multi-criteria shortest path a problem. Um, this heavily now depends on your cost function on the graph. Uh, there's a general view on this in the paper. I'm going to talk about canonical cost functions, which is just fancy for uh, second order polynomials. So we have the form ax squared plus b and these kind of derivatives. And we know for two cost functions of this type that they intersect in at most one point in the interval from zero to d. And therefore, we know that one function dominates another function only if it dominates it at the beginning and at the end. So we can have the situation like here, where we uh, tau p1 is always less or equal uh, at 0 and at d. If it, it would cross this function like such uh, beforehand, then this condition wouldn't hold. So this is a property of second order polynomials. For the derivatives, it's even, even easier. There we just have to compare the two values a1 and a2. And because we can reduce this question to answering uh, these two uh, questions and this question to comparing one point, we say that the cost functions have Pareto dimension two and the derivatives have Pareto dimension one. Now, we can make the following theorem. Uh, 
uh, if we have cost functions with Pareto dimension L, uh, K, and their derivatives have Pareto dimension L, so we can, again, Pareto dimension means with how many points can we answer the, uh, this question here of dominance between cost functions, then we can just reduce this problem of finding all non-dominated paths by uh, running a, a multi-criteria shortest path query on the graph with K plus L criteria. In this case, it would be three criteria because we could map each edge to a three-dimensional vector uh, containing this value, this value, and this value, and then do just component-wise comparisons, like a um, normal uh, multi-criteria shortest path query does. And this is the basic idea behind our algorithm. So, of course, the Pareto mapping, as we call it, depends on your cost functions. This gives you an intuition on why we can apply multi-criteria uh, queries to find out uh, the Pareto set or Pareto front, in which we then can brute force um, finding the best solution. And now the question is, are there actual uh, psychological models that are Pareto conform? Again, remember Pareto conform means dominance implies lower overall costs. Now, for example, the system optimum model is Pareto conform. The model assumes that given Q and P, um, the drivers will distribute optimally. So XP equals argmin of CPX. We just assume that the drivers are going the best they can do, so they minimize this function. And this model actually is Pareto conform. But how can we show this? Well, again, consider what do we have given. We have given an original root Q, we have given two alternative paths, P1 and P2, where P1 dominates P2, so we have dominance on the function level. Now we can make this uh, chain of statements here. We know that CP1 is actually CP1 of XP1, where XP1 is the minimum of CP1. So we know this is by definition of the system optimum model, the minimum value of CP1. So it must be, as XP1 is the minimum, less or equal, then another value, xp2, which is the, uh, the minimum of cp2. Uh, so we get this inequality, and now we have already seen the lemma that for all x, if p1 dominates p2, this inequality holds, so we can go from cp1 to cp2. And this now, as this is the minimum of this function, is just equal to the overall cost for p2. And therefore we get cp1 less or equal than cp2, which proves our claim of Pareto conformity. So again, here the definition of the model comes into play, while here our definition of dominance and therefore the derivative comes into play. We also provide a mathematical proof of this lemma in our paper, of course, but for now the intuition between this inequality again is that we have the derivative of the intersection in our definition of dominance. To conclude my talk, we have seen that the SAP problem searches for the optimal alternative route uh, to a given original route according uh, to a psychological model. And for Pareto conform models, this reduces to solving a multi-criteria shortest path problem and then scored, scoring the results. In the paper, we furthermore consider additional psychological models like the user equilibrium or linear dependency, and we also uh, generalize this to a very general model. We provide more SAP problem variants regarding, for example, the disjointedness, and we also provide algorithms relying on fewer criteria in the multi-criteria query, but use dynamic programming approaches to combine multiple queries into one result. And of course, we pr also provide the framework that should push forward research in the redirection of strategic routing. We've also implemented our algorithms. Our experiments indicate that the algorithms are feasible in practice, and we don't need often, often, uh, often don't even need the DP variants of our algorithms because we can just run the plain queries. There's also been other research that states that Pareto shortest path is often feasible in practice. And, and lastly, uh, there would be uh, future work would be interesting to to consider what kind of psychological model is realistic, maybe with a simulation or like a f field research, and we could also uh, improve our implementations by uh, employing pre-processing techniques and our algorithms, as we just use techniques such as a star in our implementations. Uh, of course. Uh, yeah, um, targeting other strategic routing problems is also an interesting further direction to continue this work. This concludes my talk on our paper. Um, I'm open for any questions now. Thank you very much for your, for your time and attention and uh, hope to talk to you.